do that I'm trying. I am in my art room, my old filming room, and I wanted to do some painting with you guys and chat about cult things. YouTube is suggesting these vertical live streams. I've never done this before. Don't know how it works. Don't know what this is all about, but I just wanted to try it. So we're going to paint. We're going to chat about all the latest cult things going on. We'll see if anyone shows up. I didn't tell anybody I was going live. So I, I have no idea how this is going to go, but we'll see. This is something I'd like to do more in the future. I want to share more of my art with you guys. And I have a lot of things that I'm actually working on because for those of you that don't know, my husband is a carpenter. We have like a carpentry and home renovation business. And the man has a lot of scrap wood laying around and usually he burns it. We try to save scraps for a long time to see if we can reuse them for something else. But after they've been sitting in the shop or outside for a while, we usually burn it. So I thought I would try to save some of those pieces and paint some things on them. And my mom actually runs a local farmer's market where I live. So I thought I would try to paint some things to sell at the farmer's market. Opening day is in two weeks. So I have a lot of things to paint. If you are jumping in the live, comment and say hi. We're going to talk about, I want to talk about Diddy and Diddy's homes being raided. And 50 Cent's Instagram posts about it are hilarious. There's been a video of Justin Bieber going viral again in the wake of all of this. I've also seen some Scientology and some SPTV things going on. So we'll see what we get into, um, but I am going to start by varnishing this painting. I'm trying to figure out how to situate a vertical live stream so you can see, kind of see what I'm doing, but also see me and like hear me talk. But I've been really inspired by mushrooms and little booties lately. So this is my first actually mushroom booty painting. And I had an old canvas with something on it that I didn't like anymore that I reused. So I need to varnish this. I need to, um, the mushroom has a butt. Oh my gosh, John, relax. Obviously, those are really cute legs, but I'm going to varnish this one. I have a cow that I'm reworking for the market. I have another mushroom butt that I'm working on. Dale, everyone's butt is shaped differently. Good grief. I have another mushroom butt that I'm working on, and I have a couple of uh, MDF board pieces that I want to paint a background on. And we will chat about all the things. Uh, but did you guys see Diddy's homes were raided by Homeland Security and he's being investigating, he's being investigated for all of that? Um, I don't know what I'm allowed to say on YouTube versus TikTok. I'm usually on TikTok, but trafficking, SEX trafficking, and RICO charges which is wild. I think Diddy is extremely cult-like. A lot of Cassie's lawsuit and the most recent lawsuit had a lot of allegations that are very similar to some lawsuits against Scientology right now, actually, um, and a lot of other things. But yeah, it's crazy. I People are wondering if he has fled to a non-extraditing country, but he was at Miami Airport on the same day that his homes were being raided and they, the police talked to him there and allegedly somebody that worked for him did get arrested at that airport. But I don't know if he got on the private jet or not. So we'll see. John says, yeah, if they went to that level, they're pretty sure he did what they think he did. Yeah. Yeah. Diddy is in trouble and I'm patiently awaiting an arrest because Homeland Security, we saw this with Josh Duggar, right? We saw Homeland Security investigating Josh Duggar in his car lot and a lot of things. And people were, the Duggars were denying it. They were saying they're not under investigation. 
But a lot of people were saying something is going on. Homeland Security does not do a raid. They do not show up somewhere unless they have everything they need and they do not press charges unless they have already won the case on paper. So by the time we get a Diddy arrest, that means they have all the evidence they need and they are going to make an arrest. <sighs> the only thing, John, oh, oh no, John, we're going to have beef. Um, oh, yeah, that's a really bad joke. That's a really bad joke. <laughs> what Josh Duggar did was awful. Okay, I need to get the right paintbrush to varnish this booty mushroom. It's a booty, okay? <clears throat> but yeah, the Diddy stuff is crazy. I'm so glad that Cassie decided to file... Can you guys hear me now? Let me know if you can hear me. Someone was trying to FaceTime me. Okay, good. Yeah, my sound went out because my friend was trying to FaceTime me while I was doing this. But I was saying that I'm really glad Cassie filed her lawsuit against Diddy when she did because I feel like that was the catalyst for a lot of this. And it was all because they opened up in New York. They passed that law saying that people could file charges past the statute of limitations in a civil case, not in a criminal case, but just in a civil case. And that's what led Cassie to file her lawsuit. And even though they settled, and I believe she absolutely deserved that settlement, I think it was the catalyst for this other guy, Lil Rod, I think was his name, to file his civil suit, which is alleging a lot of the really bad things that Diddy did. And that is also recent because Lil Rod worked on his most recent, on Diddy's most recent album. And the allegations are from 2018. So none of that is past the statute of limitations. And there were a lot of criminal allegations. So I really hope that this is enough to expose, at the very least, what has been going on. Yeah, I hope more girls come out and hold him accountable as well. It's a very scary thing to do, but because there is um momentum now with obviously potentially a criminal case but with more lawsuits and sadly with a man coming forward sometimes the way that our systems are set up men are sometimes listened to more than women in these situations so i think it's possible that more women will come forward i hope that women get justice but i really hope that whatever some of the things people talk about Diddy doing is awful, like so awful. So I hope that people are able to get justice if they were harmed, involved, any of that stuff. But I had a video on TikTok go viral talking about 50 Cent getting wind of Diddy's arrest. And 50 Cent is not a saint either. I'm not advocating for him as a good person. But he is so petty and so hilarious, especially when it comes to Diddy. Like, he just cannot stand him. And he was posting really funny <laughs> memes with really funny captions on Instagram and then deleting them and then posting more. Did any of you guys see that? John says, honestly, I hope they find some kind of black book and hold anyone else who was part of what Diddy was doing accountable. 
Yeah, I hope that. Or I hope that Diddy, like, I hope he sings like a canary. Like, I hope he tells everyone what, who else was involved because there are so many other people that allegedly were involved in what Diddy was doing. Chris Brown, I think, is one of those people. He has a lot of allegations against him and he is very violent. And then 50 Cent was calling out Jay-Z in his Instagram posts, which is wild to me. 50 and Cat Williams are going to be two people to watch during this. Yeah. Immortal Technique said something in a live stream talking about mainstream rap a long time ago. He mentioned Diddy and minors signing NDAs. So that's one of the reasons why I think Diddy is super culty is because a lot of the allegations against him talked about people signing NDAs. And that is something that predators and predatory institutions do super often. Alexa Nicholas is on YouTube. She goes live on YouTube all the time. She was on Zoe 101 and she was talking about her experience with Dan Schneider well before Quiet On Set came out and she was on Quiet On Set. But one of the things that attracted me to her content was her talking about how these predatory organizations and companies use NDAs to silence victims And that's not even what NDAs are supposed to be for. They're not supposed to be, technically NDAs are not even legally enforceable if crimes are taking place. But a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people are not in positions of power to be able to advocate for themselves in those situations. And yeah, a lot of the allegations against Diddy um, had to do with NDAs and people not being able to talk about their experiences with him super culty okay i'm going to try to paint the background of one of these mdf doors hold on i really don't know a good way to do this how is that even allowed how can a minor sign a legally binding nda they can't like a lot of times the ndas aren't legally binding they just people don't know that NDAs are scary. Um, Oh, but back to what 50 Cent was posting on his Instagram. He had one. What was the the first one he posted? He was saying something about Diddy's kids being outside of the Miami house in cuffs. Um, Oh, and Homeland Security, like, drove a boat up to Diddy's mansion. Like, they came by land and by sea. And got everyone out, cuffed everybody. TMZ got a video of some, I don't know who they got this video from, where it came from. But somebody walked through Diddy's house in Miami after the raid and it was trashed. And that often happens with police raids when they go search for something. They don't bring it back. They're just going through and searching. But yeah, Diddy's kids, his adult children, not like minor children. But his adult sons, uh, one of them was named in Lil Rod's lawsuit. They were cuffed outside the house. And 50 Cent posted that on Instagram. was like, wow, they got your kids in cuffs. (laughs) You're nowhere to be found. And and then he was posting the stuff about Jay-Z. He put Jay-Z's face on a milk carton. And was like, Where's Jay-Z? Puff says you're not answering the phone. It lit- You guys should go look. I don't know what is still up or what new stuff he is posting because he posted and deleted a lot of it. But it was hilarious. Hilarious. But a lot of people um, in my comments on TikTok were telling me that 50 Cent is not really the greatest person either. But he's not in hot water like Diddy right now. So that's that. I'm super sad about the videos of Diddy and Justin Bieber, though, that have been circulating from when Justin Bieber was like 14 years old and Diddy supposedly 
had him for what the fuck am I, I mean this one. Diddy supposedly took him for 48 hours to like do whatever he wants at 14 or 15 years old. Um, and he said in the video that they were gonna do a lot of things that Diddy could not disclose. I think I'm gonna post my video about that on YouTube. If you search Justin Bieber and Diddy on Google right now, the video will come up. But Justin Bieber always makes me sad. I don't know if it's because we're like similar ages and I like grew up listening to Justin Bieber or if it's because we're we were part of the same cult or at least like cult like belief system for a while. But his mom raised him in cult like beliefs. And then he, there are a lot, there have always been rumors about what might have happened to him with Diddy and Usher when he was a young teenager. And then he was hanging out with Carl Lentz for all those years in Hillsong. Hillsong is a harmful and destructive cult. There have been many Hillsong documentaries made now. And Carl Lentz was a predator. And there are no allegations of Carl Lentz specifically with Justin Bieber, but still he was spending all of his time with a horrible predator for a number of years. And now after that, the fall of that, he goes to church with Judah Smith and church home is a very predatory church. Judah Smith doesn't have any allegations, but Lou Taylor is on the board of Church Home. And Lou Taylor is Diddy's manager. Lou Taylor also was involved in, obviously, Britney's conservatorship and was accused of taking money from Britney Spears and donating it to a very cult-like charity organization. There's just so much. There is so much to Hollywood and all of this Diddy stuff. Um... It's really sad. And thinking about, yeah, with Drake Bell, someone just said the Drake Bell stuff is crazy too. With everything that we've learned from Quiet on Set and Dan Schneider and what Drake Bell went through, I think a lot of people's eyes are finally opening up to child stardom and how bad and scary and crazy that is. I need to get, I used put way too much paint on here. This took way more paint last time, I feel like. This board is not soaking it up as much, so I need to get another one. Hold on. Okay. I'm making a mess in here. I'm really glad that people are responding so much to Quiet On Set because, like I said, I've been following Alexa Nicholas for a while who has been exposing this and talking about it for so long and my fascination is with cults as someone who was a little bit of a cult hopper for a time I see so many parallels to being raised in a cult and being a child star and it's so sad my heart legit weeps for Amanda um same I am so horrified and like, I don't know, part of me wishes they didn't try to tell Amanda Bynes' story for her on Quiet On Set. And then another part of me just feels so sad for her and feels that she should be acknowledged somewhat for what she very likely went through at the hands of Dan Schneider. And judging by the way that she disappeared for a number of years and how she has looked recently on TikTok and on social media, she has a lot of trauma from being a child star. I actually saw a TikTok that I stitched yesterday of someone named Aurelia. They made a TikTok saying, I wonder if executives and the networks like Nickelodeon and stuff 
made us think that these child stars were going off the rails because they were crazy and there was something wrong with them. Like they developed substance abuse problems or, um, you know, they had to go to rehab or like whatever. I wonder if they developed this narrative that they were crazy so that no one would believe them when they started talking about what happened to them as children and so that they could easily financially exploit them, which made me think of Britney Spears and how she was being financially exploited by her dad and Lou Taylor in the conservatorship for all of that time. And I really agree with that person. And it's very cult-like because cult cults really do that to former members. Anyone who is a former member that speaks out about the abuse that they suffered within a cult is labeled a crazy person. You know, in Scientology, they're labeled a suppressive person. Um, They call them apostates and heretics and disgruntled and all of these things so that people think that they are evil or have evil intentions. And so nobody will listen to them when they expose the abuse. And I truly feel like that is what we see with all of these child stars. They're not crazy and off the rails. They have trauma. They have trauma and they were, they need help. And they were never cared for as children. They were never to, they were never able to develop properly. They were never able to do anything normal. And a lot of them were abused, severely abused. And it's so, so sad. John says that's exactly why they did it. They capitalized on those kids spitting out in response to the abuse. Exactly. How did Shia make it out? I don't think he did. I don't think Shia is okay. I do not think Shia LaBeouf is okay. I also don't think, like I was talking about Justin Bieber earlier, the Miley Cyruses and the Justin Biebers of the world, they are, they just... The ones that stayed successful in the industry, I think were just able to suppress it better and get through enough and had enough people in their corner that they made it out better than some of the ones that we see that just didn't have a successful career. I think the only difference is they had someone helping give them, continue to give them a successful career, whereas the ones some of the other ones just were completely abandoned because child stars, um, Allison Stoner has a really great YouTube channel and podcast called Dear Hollywood, where they talk about what it's like being raised as a child star. And you're not allowed to grow up and develop normally as an adult. Like the, the way that you are raised, you all have issues. Everyone has issues. And a lot of these child stars have people exploiting them and taking their money and not looking out for them. I think Shia's, I think Shia LaBeouf's dad is the one who managed him for a long time. Likely took advantage of him to some degree, but I think Shia LaBeouf's dad did enough to keep Shia going for long enough for him to develop a career outside of child stardom. But he ha- he's had a lot of scandals and a lot of issues and people have said he's a nightmare to work with. I definitely wouldn't say he came out unscathed. Okay. Let's see if I can work on this little Callie really quick. If we had mushroom judgments, you'll probably have cowy judgments too. This little cow has a little bit of a bug eye going on, and I'm going to see if I can fix it <laughs> instead of him just looking a little bug eyed. So we'll see how this goes. But yeah, it is also sad. Anytime a new cult documentary comes out, 
I watch it and then get really sad for a while and have to take a break before I move on to the next big thing. And the Diddy scandal has me kind of upset and reeling too. Do you guys, anyone who's on right now, do you guys watch SPTV and Aaron Smith Levin growing up in Scientology? Do you guys know what's been going on with Mike Rinder and all of that stuff? Because we can kind of talk about the latest Scientology happenings as well. I actually just posted on TikTok about some Scientology influencers. Aaron posted about um, Braille skateboarding being a Scientologist and um, being like a leader at the San Francisco org and the pasta queen who has like millions and millions of followers on TikTok being a Scientologist as well. So I made videos about that and people were shocked. Wolf Chief, I am painting and talking about cults and Scientology and Diddy. Diddy's homes being raided and child stars and all the culty things. But I am kind of, I guess I shouldn't say shocked that Mike Rinder and John Atak tried to make a video basically discrediting Miriam and all of that stuff. But I found it really interesting that um, they were answering questions in that video that like no one asked them and still not addressing any of the actual issues anyone was bringing up. And talking about like the actual problems that people have with Mike's behavior. And I didn't watch the whole video. I caught snippets of it from a couple different SPTV creators that were posting commentary about it. Oh no, I just stepped on one of the boards that I just painted, awesome. Now I'm gonna have pink paint on my foot and I'll have to redo that, whatever. I didn't watch the whole thing, but from the parts that I watched, he did not apologize. He did not once say, you know, I'm sorry that what I said came off this way. That wasn't my intention. Um, here's where I think the misunderstanding is. And what I find is really telling is that he didn't, he's not having these conversations privately with Miriam. Not that I think they have to stay private because I know that all of this discourse is happening very publicly. And a lot of us are talking about this very publicly, but he could apologize to Miriam privately and make videos about it, but he didn't do that. So it's very weird. Let's see. I've been aware of this stuff since I was like 13. Now I'm 28. I still care about it, but emotions are different when you've spent a long time focusing on it all. Yeah. It's really sad. The Mike Rinder stuff is very disappointing. They strawmanned Miriam's issues with Rinder to claim that she was alleging Rinder had committed essay on children. Exactly. I thought that was so weird. I was like, why? Why are they answering these questions? Like, I, I know that these are not the issues that people are bringing forward. I have been, I have been trying to figure out because a part of me just so badly wants to believe that Mike Rinder is just super clueless as to how like the online world works but he just continually does like very baffling things that I feel like he just really should not be doing in this case if he wanted to respond to all of this discourse about Miriam then he can continue this conversation with her privately by apologizing first and he can bring that public and say this is my side of things but I feel like they were not even actually trying to address the issues that Miriam brought up they were just trying to say this is a big misunderstanding I've never done this I've never done that I've never done things to children like what a bizarre question no one is suggesting that he has no one is suggesting that that is the case. So I just thought it was really weird. And then John, you just said one of the other board members released a hit piece on her blog about Aaron too for some reason. 
I was watching part of Kelly Copter's video, but then I had to go live to, to do this and test out how this is going. I saw Kelly's video, part of it, and I know a lot of these people. Like Liz Gale and I have done lives together if you haven't seen them. I, Serge and I have done lives together and Stephanie who wrote that blog post, I just know, I know people in real life that are friends with her and I don't know why she would write something about that. I don't know Stephanie personally though. I've never met her personally or connected with her personally. So I, I don't know her to, to know enough of like what would motivate her to do that. I feel like everybody trying to address this situation is just entirely missing the point. He's not clueless. These are bad faith tactics. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I don't, I don't know. I guess is everybody just really that mad at Aaron? Like jealous of Aaron? Like what do they think they're going to accomplish? is my question. And I don't know. I tend to really give people the benefit of the doubt probably too much at times. And I just always assume people do things in good faith. That's part of why I think I'm very cultable and why I've been <laughs> in a couple culty situations because I just generally try to believe the best in people. But I, I also want to know people's motives. Like, I want to understand why Mike Rinder continues, like, continuously does some of the dumbest things I've ever seen somebody on the internet do and how he ropes people into the dumb things so willingly. I would be more inclined to listen to what Mike Rinder has to say if he actually addressed what people's issues are but he just talks around them and brings up like other things that don't make any sense and then yeah I need to see I need to understand what Stephanie Hutchinson was doing with that post because that also doesn't seem to make any sense whatsoever I have been doing so much on TikTok recently that I've been a little bit out of the SBTV loop. What else has been going on? Oh, the SPTV Foundation is up and running. That's exciting. I'm glad that there's another option for people who want to help people getting out of Scientology and hopefully something that is a little bit more survivor centered and survivor focused because I think that's what is missing from the Aftermath Foundation as a whole. And I'm so happy Liz is a part of it because I think she's just so she has a lot to offer in that area. And when she made the video about like what Mike Rinder and the Aftermath Foundation could do in this situation, I thought that was so thoughtful like it was just so well thought out and smart obviously no one is listening no one at the aftermath foundation is listening to liz's suggestions in that area but they were smart regardless and i was very proud of her for that Okay, well, this was fun. It's almost five o'clock, so I have got to cut this off. I definitely did not get as much painting done as I thought I would, but I honestly don't know what to expect with painting and talking at the same time. But this was still really fun. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and talking to me and letting me just share all my thoughts about all the cult things and the SPTV things. And I think I'm going to go live and do this again, maybe in a couple of days and maybe have some more finished products. So thanks so much for hanging out. You're welcome, John, for showing you the booty mushroom. Thank you for your 
thoughts and opinions on that piece. I will take that into consideration for my next booty mushroom. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.